all of the points we have made so far. But first, let me get some more help from our new drivers here in the studio. You guys did a great job of showing the most common distracted driving situations. Okay, big point coming up right here. Distracted driving is a choice. I'll say that again. Distracted driving is a choice. You can turn off your cell phone. You do not have to text. You do not have to eat in the car, etc. Next time you look at all those distractions our new drivers acted out earlier, you'll see that every one of them involved a choice by the driver. Yes, every single one. Okay, if distracted driving is a choice, and it's a choice you make consciously, I mean, nobody's forcing you to eat and drive, for instance, then what about that decision? Then you own it. Exactly, I like that. You own it. You own that decision to drive distracted. So, if I own my distracted driving decision, then what else do I own? The result? Yes. If a driver makes a choice to be distracted and comes out of the driving zone, then that driver owns or is responsible for all or part of the result, if there is a collision or a crash. Okay, with that hanging in the air, let's take a look at the scenario. Half the motor vehicle fatalities happen at less than 40 miles an hour. We're going to show a collision scene in this typical suburban neighborhood at a crossroads right here. It's hard enough to drive in these suburban areas when you've got potentially no sidewalks, you've got shrubbery blocking views, you've got houses blocking views. So when you combine that with distractions, you got a big problem. As you can see here, we have a black car on the main road and a white car on the side street. The black car has no stop sign and is on the main road. The white car is coming to a stop sign on the side street. Let's see what happens. There are all kinds of reasons why somebody might overshoot a stop sign. Could be inexperience, could be slippery road conditions, or it could be distractions. The driver of the white car received a phone call and grabbed their phone off the passenger seat to see who called them. In grabbing the phone, looking at the screen and analyzing who called, their eyes and mind were off the road ahead for two or three seconds. They had made themselves potentially dangerous because their mind and vision had lost track of the coming stop sign. They slammed on the brakes as hard as they could, but the nose of their car ran past the end of the side street and into the main road by just two or three feet. At that precise moment, the black car was right there and the two cars collided. Let's go back to the driver of the black car who was on the main road. They had looked ahead, believed there were no potential dangers, and decided to change a CD. This choice made them vulnerable. They had overlooked several potential dangers as we see here. As their eyes went down to change the CD, they lost central and peripheral vision ahead. If they had not looked down, their peripheral vision could have seen the white car approaching the junction too fast to stop. During those two seconds with their eyes down, they lost the opportunity to break or react to the problem in any way. The collision between the black and white car is typical of real-world collisions and crashes in the sense that it involves distracted drivers. In our scenario, it's easy to blame the driver of the white car. He ran the stop sign. But just one second, let's change things a little. What if this had actually been this? Yes, this should make anyone think. Remember, the driver of the black car missed two seconds of data just to change a CD. No brakes, no evasive steering, no reaction at all. This would be no fender bender. Every year, hundreds of thousands of drivers survive major collisions and crashes. Many of these drivers have to live with the knowledge that their distracted driving led to another individual's death or life-changing injury. Nobody wants to live with the knowledge that they were even 1% responsible for a collision where somebody was seriously injured or worse, especially if they were driving distracted. Our collision scenario was never about blaming the driver of the white car or the black car. It was about illustrating the choices of both drivers. 
Anytime your eyes are off the road, even for a split second, the situation ahead can change and the results can be catastrophic. New drivers, don't give up your chance to react to road situations. Don't be dangerous or vulnerable. Please, never choose distracted driving. In closing, 